Um, then the last song before I go into the Killing Me Softly song. Um, takes Courage, why did you, uh, well, call the album, name the album after the song? It wasn't actually my choice yeah. to name it what that. Did, what did you want to Well, do? originally it was called Gun Metal Sky and um, uh, V2, the record company, and also a gentleman named Rul Krause, who kind of got me all going again, um, decided that Gun Metal Sky really didn't make sense in this country. It may have sound even like a, like a protest album or something. For me, metal just, album. Yeah. For me, it was just a nice word for gray, gray sky gun metal. But um, so he cho they chose Takes Courage. And I'm really, uh, I was thrilled because it was a song that took me so long to write and I wondered if I had ever really accomplished what I wanted to in that song. When did, when did you start with the song and when did you finish it? It took me the better part of a year to, to, to finish it. And what was, was, was hard on this song? I really wanted to say, um, I really wanted to say that it, it, it takes, that, that courage um, wasn't the huge things that we do. It's not the, the gigantic acts of courage, but it's the small things. It's, it's getting on a bike to come here. It's sitting at a table. It's having an interview. It's walking through a storm. It's giving up, giving in, and grieving. And all these things that take courage. It's the small acts of courage that we display as human beings every day. And that's what I so much wanted to... Uh, is, there, is, is there one thought that triggered the song, or maybe something that happened? Well, a little bit. I mean, I, of course 9-11 had a huge impact, you know, on me, and I thought about the defini uh, definition of courage at that point. You know, what, what is that? And um, I thought about, like, you know, a, a young woman waking up at, you know, alarm goes off at 6.30, gets her coffee, takes the train to the World Trade Center where she works. Maybe she's feeling like she needs to lose five more pounds, goes up in the elevator, goes to her office, sits down at her desk, hears an explosion, and jumps out a window, you know, 50 feet high, I, uh, stories high. I think about, what is that, you know? What is true courage? What what is that? And is it the firemen who ran into that building, you know, knowing that it was gonna, they weren't gonna find anyone, um, and then the firemen that sifted through the rubble afterwards, and only to have asthma as a result because they were unprotected, or being a New Yorker and walking on the street and breathing in the dust that is the souls of, of people. I just. It, that's what triggered my writing this song, and then from that I went to the smaller acts of, of, of courage, and that how brave we all are every single day. How brave. No, but I think then for you, I think it was brave for you to return, maybe, into the music scene. Yeah, you're right. I think it was brave. Okay. Um, then, uh, Killing Me Softly, do you still have the uh, paper that you wrote the original poem? Killing me softly with his, with his blues. Do you still have it? I have the poem. I do have a poem. I haven't looked at it, but um, I do have it. And the title, Killing Me Softly with His Blues, was not my title. It was um, the title of a lyricist that I was working with, and he had that that he'd gotten from this book, a book about therapy, and it was called The 50-Minute Hour. And in there is Killing Me Softly with His Blues. And uh, when I went to the club, the troubadour, to see Don McLean, and he was singing the song Empty Chairs, I thought, you know, that that title really matched what I was feeling. You know, I really felt like, like he was just singing right, right through me. So what, what actually ha had happened to you? Yeah, another breakup, another why break not, you know, men. Was just, you know, men. Always men. <laughs> At that time, boys, men, boys, men, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So how old were you then? 21, 21, yeah. So what, what, what was the poem originally called? It didn't have a name. It just was, um, after the everybody filtered out of the club, I stayed there and just wrote a poem. And the poem was something about him reading my, my letters and looking right through me and feeling like he was singing at, to me. And um, that I felt exposed and embarrassed, nervous. 
something like that. If you actually, well, the song lyrics right now, do they match your poem? Is there a lot oh, change of the... I think a fair amount changed. The sentiment is there, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the, I mean, because they kept, the lyricists kept calling me and asking me, you know, where I was sitting, feeling, what was I... You know, what was I thinking? And, and he and I were in a personal relationship at that time as well, so he certainly knew me very well. Um, but um, I would say that the song itself, you know, is, a, is based on my poem, but then the music was written by someone else and it became something else. Actually, an interesting little fact that I've never really talked about is that when, they first, when we first wrote the song, it was MacArthur Park, Richard Harris, big hit at that point and it was there was killing me softly the beginning and and the end and in the middle was another song it's funny it was like another song so it had this huge you know as though the song that he was playing then transitioned into this other piece and it was you know endless so we decided to take that middle song out did you did they use it maybe for no 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 it was totally gone and then we just kind of made that song more compact. <laughs>